Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I'm finally doing it. I'm putting a no lead synthesizer to my candid Citrans test. And I know what you're thinking about. How is he putting a legendary synthesizer into his candid Citrans test? Well, here's the thing. Every time I'm online on one of these Citrans production forums and someone asks a question about hardware synthesizer for Citrans use, there's a horde of comments telling him to go buy a virus or a node lead, especially node lead 2. Now, as a virus fanboy, I totally get the point. These complex synthesizers are really great for the complex sound designs we need in Citrans, but the node leads, I've never really understood the hype. So I thought to myself, there's only one way to find out. I have to get a node lead into my studio, try it out for myself and get my proper opinion. And this is exactly what I did. So I asked a bunch of friends and my good friend Jarata, high-tech producer, you might also know him as biological, full-on producer, he lent me his Node Lead 4 and got my virus as a hostage. And I got to spend three weeks with it and actually get my proper opinion on it. And this tutorial is going to be all about that. But before we dive into this tutorial, if you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, becoming a Patreon, or buying my presets on Gumroad. Things like that helps the channel a lot. Now with that said, let's dive into this tutorial. All right, so here's the Node Lead 4 synthesizer. And uh, what I'm about to do, I'll go through an overview of the synthesizer, then I will tell you my thoughts about it, and then we will hear it in action, and we'll finish with a verdict, okay? So, quick overview. We have a couple of oscillators in here. Oscillator 1 and 2 has the same analog wave shapes, basically sine, triangle, saw, square width, variable, pulse width. And uh, the first oscillator has the wave section here. Basically, it will play a wave shape like you can set it in here you have like all of these wave shapes you set it to play one of these wave shapes it's not really a wave table the manual says it's a wave table but a wave table actually is several wave shapes that you morph between here you just have one wave shape and that's pretty much it so i don't know why clavia called it a wave table it's not a wave table anyways we have the what they call wave table in here and for the second oscillator we have the noise section now this is really an interesting noise section because you can control its frequency and resonance with the semitone and fine tune knobs in here and this actually gives you another layer of control over the noise if you like to really go in deep creating you know percussive kind of sounds using the noise because basically in a normal synthesizer you have like a noise oscillator and you control its frequency and resonance with the filter. And here you basically have a first stage in the oscillator and the filter after that. You know, it's not a deal breaker for me, but yeah, okay, it's really nice to have. Now, oscillator one, you can control its coarse pitch. I don't know why you only have the octave shift in here to basically control it. Uh, and that's really a bummer for me. That's actually kind of like a break deal for me. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is what it is in the synthesizer. So, okay, I'm fine with that. Next, we have the oscillator modulation section in here. Uh, we have three levels of FM. Uh, they are not different FM algorithms. They are just different intensity of FM, right? So it's like FM1 is like, uh, let's say, 10%. FM2 is like 20%. FM3 is like 30% FM, you know, if that makes sense. We have soft sync and hard sync. Now, what's interesting in here is that the FM is basically oscillator 2 modulating oscillator 1. So that's cool. But the soft and the hard sync is a hidden third oscillator that will soft or hard sync the first oscillator and i think this is you know a bummer because you will get the soft and the hard sync effect using the amount knob in here but what i'm actually looking for is in here you know to actually have full control over the pitch of uh the the sync effect first of all and second of all i would like to these oscillators to hard sync each other especially when i'm going fm because like this i will get like a static FM sound like we're used to make and this without the heart syncing both oscillators together the FM will always sound different every time you hit a new note now I'm completely okay with that because you know it has this analog mojo to it but you know this synthesizer was out in 2014 and for the price tag I would have expected some sort of syncing between both oscillators, which doesn't exist. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a deal breaker for me. 
But you know what? The synthesizer sounds so good that, okay, let's forget about it and move on. Next, we have the filter section in here. Now, the filter, you know, I, I, I don't have to tell you about how good it sounds. You have like a three, actually you have five um, low-pass filters. Uh, we have low-pass 12, 24, 48, and we have a Moog emulation and a TB303 emulation filters in here. And uh, we have a high-pass filter and a band-pass filter. Now, the band-pass filter is, sounds so good. Actually, all the filters sound so good on the synthesizer. You know, I just can't. You'll hear it in action in a few. Then we have a filter overdrive in here. Sounds really good. Really basic filter envelope in here. Attack the case stain release. Next we have the amp envelope in here. Same as the filter and an output section that feeds to the effects section in here. Now the effects is really interesting because you know, everything about the synthesizer is really interesting, you know? That doesn't mean that it's better or worse. It's just interesting because I personally never seen this kind of, like, design, right? So, talking about the effects, and this applies to a lot of things about the synthesizer. So here we have the effects section, and we have six effects, basically. We have a bit crusher, compressor drive, we have talks in here they, they try to emulate like some sort of a comp filter but according to the manual it does it with delays in instead of basically filters it sounds pretty interesting i didn't find a really good use to it but it sounds interesting and you have a comp filter the comp filter is i'm sorry to say this you know it's unpopular opinion number i don't know what in this tutorial i found it useless anyways the thing is these effects as I, as I mentioned, and some other parameters of the synthesizer are basically presets from the factory. And all what you do is just play with the amount knob of these effects. Now, they sound good, but we're making sidelines in here. And this, again, is a huge deal breaker for me because I can't dial exactly the effects that I want. Like, I like to have full control over my effects, but but that's me, okay? I like to, yeah, as, as I mentioned, have full control. I like to, you know, dial exactly, I don't know, a comp filter of, uh, I don't know, 20 hertz, whatever, with a lot of feedback, etc. And here, you just have preset and an amount knob, and that's pretty much it. Doesn't mean you can get good sounds of it, but yeah, deal breaker for me. And all of that feeds into either a delay or a reverb, which surprisingly sounds so good, especially the reverb. It sounds really good. So yeah, this section is really nice one, Clavia. Anyways, all of that is being modulated with the modulation section in here. So we have a couple of LFOs. Now, this is really weird because the first LFO can be an arpeggiator, meaning that if you turn it on, you will lose the LFO. So it's either one or the other. And I, I, I just don't understand why. I mean, they, they could have just added an ARP section in here and called it a day and kept another LFO. But I don't know. I, 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 I won't comment, man. I know a lot of people will hate me after this <laughs> tutorial. So yeah, I won't comment. Anyways, a couple of LFOs and a mod envelope. And the mod envelope is really simple. And here we have attack decay or attack release. Each of the LFOs and the mod envelope has one of six pre-routed destinations. So you choose either of them. And this limits the synthesizer way too much for me because, okay, I have one source but why having only one destination for each of the sources you, you know what i mean i mean i don't know i'm i'm a virus fanboy you know i come from modulation matrixes and stuff you know like this synthesizer again is out in 2014 so you know by that time if it was out in the 90s i would have said okay makes sense you know but in 2014 with all of the evolution in synthesizers that we were having and, you know, especially VSTs and also hardware. Why keeping this kind of design? I, I, I don't understand. Like, okay, this is a performance synthesizer. There's no menu diving in here, okay? Everything is on the front panel. Everything is accessible while you're performing with it, right? But I don't understand why they chose to limit it in terms of modulation, you know? Because at the and the synthesizer does several sounds really good, and that's pretty much it, and you can't expand on it. You know what I'm trying to say? And, and I think this is a bummer, because 
as I mentioned earlier, it sounds so good. So yeah, that, again, another deal breaker for me. Now, getting back to these LFOs in here, so the LFO one has um, four variations of a saw wave, basically a triangle and a square. Um, they both LFOs goes from I think 0.4 hertz, something like that, it's like really slow, to up to 532 hertz, something like that. It goes into all the audible range, and this creates some really nice effects. So that's a plus one. Uh, second LFO in here has the classic shapes, as you can see in here, you know, uh, triangle, square, so up, so down, uh, sample and glide, sample and hold, that's really nice. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the mod envelope is just a mod envelope, you know, attack decay or attack release, nothing too special about it. Uh, next we have the voicing mode, we, can, we have three flavors of unison, and Again, this is one of the weird things about this synthesizer. You can't control the unison. I, I, why? Just why? <laughs> you know? I don't understand. And here we have basically the control section over the synthesizer. Uh, master level, there are some sound parameters like MIDI channels, which uh, it has actually four layers in here, so we can control these four layers from here. I, I didn't mention this. I'm sorry for that, but... This synthesizer is a four-layer, 20-voice synthesizer, uh, which is actually quite quite good. I mean, I would have loved more voices, but okay, whatever, Clavia, that's not a big of a problem. Uh, but yeah, you can put these voices, you can split them over the keyboard, you can layer them on top of each other's. Each one of them can go into a different output. There's four outputs somewhere over here. So yeah, that, that's pretty nice. And you control everything in here, right? Now... Here, as you can see, there's the morph and the impulse morph. And this is the most interesting uh, feature of the synthesizer, right? So it's some sort of a macro, right? The morph in here, for example, if you hit the velocity and you ask it to modulate the oscillator modulation amount by this much, this means that the velocity, when it's on zero, the modulation amount will be on zero, and when it's on 100%, it's going to be on seven or something like that. And this is really interesting because uh, it expands, <laughs> first of all, on the modulation uh, possibilities of the synthesizer, and it actually creates um, some sort of a, an interaction with the synthesizer that I think is really interesting, you know. And you can do the same thing with the wheel, with the mod wheel in here. And when it comes to the impulse morph in here, unlike the classic morph in here, the classic morph can go really smoothly from like zero to, I don't know, eight or whatever value I set it. The impulse morph is... Let's say choose impulse morph number one. We set it to eight again, like I did with the velocity. So now the synthesizer is on zero. And when I hit seven, it'll just jump right to eight, like right away. And um, this is one of its, again, performance side of things. And I think it could be like really interesting to, you know, in a side transport, like remember everything I'm saying is because I make Psytrance and I use synthesizer in a really different way than just I don't, someone performing, uh, I don't know, some pop music or whatever, or like EDM music or whatever, you know, on stage. So with this impulse morph in here, it could become like really interesting from a sound design point of view to just jump between these values, you know, while you're just like doing your thing and recording the synthesizer right so um yeah that's uh, th that's one of the really interesting sides of this synthesizer all right so that was a really quick overview of the node lead synthesizer with all my thoughts about it now let's hear it in action shall we so let's initialize the sound so we have basically a basic saw open the filter give it full volume all right so Here's one thing I really don't like about the synthesizer. As far as I know, it has balanced outputs. And this means that the output is really low. And uh, like right now, I'm peaking at almost minus 20. Yeah, almost minus 20 decibels. And uh, this is really not cool if you don't have a good sound card with good preamps and good converters because you can easily get some floor noise. You know, like if your sound card has a high floor noise, your preamps are bad, whatever, uh, you will color the sound. And um, yeah, I think this is bad. Like I prefer synthesizers that has better gain staging that can output uh, at a higher volume just to get rid of 
any problem that can get caused by bad preamps or whatever. You know, like I had the experience with them. So that's why I like tend to prefer to have a louder output. Uh, anyways, uh, what we were talking about, here we have a basic saw wave. Let's hear the filter. You know, we're here for that. 24 decibel low pass filter. Man, that filter sounds so good. The 48 decibel sounds even better. Oh my god, that's so good. Let's try the FM because I know all of you are waiting for the FM in here. So let's set it to oscillator 1, the oscillator mix in here. Let's go with the basic FM triangle to a saw wave, right? Let's set it to FM number 1. Okay, let's set it to FM number 2, it's gonna get interesting. And let's take the first oscillator, the second oscillator, a an octave lower. interesting let's take everything an octave higher let's set everything to go into a bandpass filter give it some resonance now we have this now let's give it some delay something like this let's sync it to the clock set it to one on eight dot it like this give it some feedback now let's make a more interesting FM and go with what I like to do a saw wave FMing a square check this out let's give it a low pass filter so you can hear the FM Let's give it a high pass, like this. Pretty, pretty decent FM. Now let's hear some of the wave shapes that comes with it, or the wave tables, and then we'll hear it in a track, okay? So uh, let's go to the wave in here. Let's set to first oscillator. Let's take down all of the FM in here. And let's go to the bells, right? Listen to this. I don't know if you hear the potential, but let's take it an octave lower. Now we have this. Right, let's set it soft sync like this. Now have this, check this out. It can do some virusy stuff, right? Let's give it some delay like this, check this out. And what's pretty interesting about these shapes is that you can FM them and actually get some really nice tones out of them. Check this out. Yeah, pretty decent FM machine, man. Let's hear it in action in a track, shall we? All right, so the first patch I want to show you in here is a really basic FM patch. So let's check this out. Pretty decent FM, man. <laughs> Let's try another patch.
right, that was pretty spooky. And now for the last sound, I wanted to go something a little bit more the synthesizer, something a little bit more VA, you know, something more like 80s, 90s kind of sounds. So it goes like this. the sound demo of the node lead 4 now the verdict i think it's an amazing synthesizer it sounds really good the oscillator sounds really good the fm is up to the reputation the filter is oh my god sounds really good you know but this isn't the synthesizer for me it, it, the synthesizer well first of all it's hot <laughs> it's really hot <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that that's for me i'm sorry that that's that's a deal breaker also for me now, besides it, it being hot, the synthesizer does several sounds and it does it really well, but it can't expand upon these sounds, all right? You know, like even when we're talking about FM, it, it does the FM like this and you can't really play more with the FM, you know? And the modulation is really, really, really limiting. Like you have basically three sources to three destinations and that's pretty much it you can duplicate stuff and if you turn on the arpeggiator you lost an lfo and and i'm sorry this is uh yeah this is a deal breaker for me you know what i'm looking for in a synthesizer is a synthesizer that can perform yep and a synthesizer that can that has an added value to my setup you know what i'm trying to say is that if I want to put this synthesizer I just checked on Reverb, cost 1.5k, if I want to buy it, you know, or, or even its older sibling, because everyone is all hyped about its older sibling, the 2R. If I want to buy it, it has to has an added value to my setup. Now, everyone tells me it's the FM. No, I can replicate this in FM and even better in so many ways with free and paid plugins. It, it just doesn't make sense, you know, like... It, if we were in the 90s, okay, I totally understand, but it's 2023, and I think, and this, you know, like, I came to this realization after spending, it's been uh, two, three weeks, I'm um, playing with the synthesizer, people has no clue what they're talking about online, telling you to put as much money on a synthesizer that does sound great, it's amazing, yes, but what added value does it have? to your setup you know what i'm trying to say now for sure if you're a touring artist you have the money for it yeah why not it makes a lot of sense if you're not a and i'm talking about the side trans producers you know and i'm talking about bedroom side trans producers you know and and that's why you know i came to this realization because else okay you're a touring artist you have the money to pay for it yeah it has it's it's an amazing addition to the setup but else i'm sorry it doesn't have any added value and uh yeah with this, this is the end of this tutorial. I know a lot of you will hate me after it, but yeah, I have to speak my mind about it. And yeah, with this, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you've liked it. I really hope you've learned something new. See you next time.